Hi, everyone, and good morning. Oh, someone needs to meet their mic. Hi, everyone, and good morning. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony webinar. Um, today, I am going to be uh, not channeling, but actually doing a master class on sacred sound. Of course, there will be some information coming through from Theos um, about the subject. But this is specifically in preparation for my trip to India, where I'm going to uh, complete my sacred sound training. And uh, I'll be doing teaching in that in the coming time. So I wanted to just talk about sacred sound, because <clears throat> everyone there's a lot of people doing sound things. They're doing singing bowls. They're doing mantra, which is what I specifically focus upon. People are doing toning. They're doing all of these things. And the question is really why? Why is this important? And the reason being is because when you align to a tone, it helps your body center and it helps your body align. And when you're in alignment, you're really remembering who you are. And that's really the purpose of all of the teachings that are out there. So it's a very beautiful and very uh, useful tool to remember who you are. And then the question is, why do you need to remember who you are? Because once you remember who you are, you are completely standing in your power. You are completely able to do all the things that most of the time we're asking in webinars what needs to be done. You know, when you are uh, a fully realized being, then you have the ability to heal. As a matter of fact, you probably don't even need to heal because you are standing in your fullness. Um, but that's the real goal of it. And it's always to bring you back to yourself. So when you're standing in your alignment, you are in the place where channeling flows, you're in the place where synchronicities happen, you're just in that beautiful, beautiful, sweet spot. And the whole purpose of humanity waking up right now is so that we can find that sweet spot, so we can create the life that we want, so that we can have all the things that we say that we need, you know, and a lot of that may <laughs> slip away what we think we need, but, but in reality, it's all about just doing that. So, when you think about sound and what sound is, sound is vibration. And vibration is what we truly are. Everything is that vibration. The only thing is, is that we really don't understand the mechanics of it. And it's not necessary that we understand it from a scientific way, but that we understand that a tone and sound and creation are the same thing. And as a human being, we sort of have a superpower. We have the ability to, to put our focus on whatever it is that we want. Whatever we focus on is what we get. And that's the big, that's the big jump that we have to make. And I want to create my own reality. Well, we focus on what we want. And if we don't focus on what we don't want, we don't get that. But if we're only thinking about what we don't want, then we get that. So that's the, that's the big, the big, big jump. Christine. She's not it. Christine, are you there? I'm there. I'm here. Are you, are you following me? Yeah. Okay. What is your I question? <laughs> I haven't a question yet. Okay. All right. I was picking up some uh, Christine questions. So what is the hardest thing for you when you think about knowing who you are what is the what is the thing where you say do because do you really know it yet or is you just sort of have the idea of yes i'm this divine being i'm focusing on um on animal welfare but at the same time getting distracted with all the other practical stuff that's on the outside like uh, politics and just recently, um, I had my house solar powered mm -hmm. and somehow crossed some electrical lines. And now I have no heat to my spa. So right now, which is what I exercise in. So now I'm having to empty the whole thing so the pipes don't freeze. Mm. You know, like the, spa, the water in the tubes. Anyway. It's very difficult to concentrate on that when I got this other reality. <laughs> well, th there's no difference in the realities. There's a difference between having, uh, believing that things are happening 
it's my mother calling me. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna put you on mute one more one second and I'm gonna mute myself <laughs> one moment. We mother her, her brother's in the hospital, so I apologize. Okay. <laughs> I've got Cagme. Uh oh, I don't hear you. You muted yourself. I don't hear you. Talk to me in a language I can understand. <laughs> All right, there. Okay. Okay. Um, my mother's brother this. is my mother's brother's in the hospital, so. Um, she was just calling to tell me that she was going to be leaving to go. So sorry about that, people. And send send love to my uncle, Bobby. Love is sent. Thank you. So there's a difference be between having to deal with things that are happening. Yeah. And those are just experiences happening to you, but they are not you. Like you're not your pipes that are freezing over. You're not any of those things. So the, in, in a way, you can exist in a world where things do happen and you can still be your true self at the same time. Do you understand? So you don't necessarily have to be focused on something else in order to be your true self. All the money I don't have that has to go to fix all these things or also, to- You're also focusing on a lot of stuff that, again, you're focusing on lack. Oh, you know, it, it's such a mentality. And the reason I picked you is because you're a really good one for it. Because, <laughs> and, I, and I say that out of love, but it's really a learned, it's a learned response to life. Oh, yeah. To constantly take whatever is coming in and then filtering it through here or more through your heart and, and deciding uh -huh. how you want to respond to it. Okay. So, do you know what I mean? So you can take anything that's happening. You can say, okay, at this moment, the money that is going to fix all these things isn't showing in my bank account, but I am trusting in my own abundance that everything shows up exactly the way that it should in the right moment that it should. And it doesn't mean that someone's going to knock on your door with a big check, but it does mean that you're open for however the universe wants to solve the issue. And you can really choose to know, to know, to know, to know that everything is fine. And it will, it will happen, whether it's through an action you take or whether it's through something that sort of drops on your lap. But that knowledge is the trigger. And if we get out of the way of it, I know it sounds really easy and it's, it's not easy at all. It's, it's what we're here to learn. And we learn it in some ways. I, I want to explain that, you know, what's going well in our life is all this stuff around us that we don't even think about. You don't even question, do you have the ability to sit down on a Saturday and have a webinar? Like, you know that you're going to do that. You know that it's going to be something you're going to participate in. It's something that you hopefully look forward to, <laughs> you know? I'm not using you too much as an example, but I'm just saying. So those are the things you know. You're very, you're very reassuring because, well, in a sense, I see it as, entertainment otherwise doggone my life would be so boring well all of it is entertainment it's all there for us yeah all there for us to experience and to play with the only truth that you really ever really really need to know is that you are an uh -huh. eternal being yes and nothing can happen to you only things can be experienced by you so if you ask yourself in every moment what is it i'm experiencing right now it, it, okay, I'm experiencing a situation where I need to uh, get water out of my house. Okay, well, isn't that interesting? Oh, and I'm experiencing a situation where I get to play the game of I don't know where the money's coming from. How much fun is that? Surprise me. I'm really oh. open. <laughs> yeah, but it's that so simple. Part, so let me yeah, go back to the example. I've set aside. That part I've set aside. The, the, the other parts are um, wondering... Um, <laughs> well, it is kind of amusing when you think about being in the yes. position and where it's all going to come, because in a sense, I feel that it's out of my hands, really. My responsibility is sending um, emails to the company and to this and to that and sending them pictures. 
and then letting it go. Mm -hmm. when, then, you send, um, e when you send the email, it's very beautifully symbolic of how it goes, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I sent them pictures too. You what? Yeah. I sent them pictures of how in the electrical box, when you awesome. do a test to the circuit, how it shuts it off. And oh, I was having fun. Yeah. And it's cold out there because it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> But doesn't it feel good to like laugh about it and just be like, oh, how hilarious. Yeah. So so let's or, talk about the difference. Or I could just let the dogs outside and let them romp around in the snow. Exactly. And come back into the house all wet and muddy and it's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful experience. So let's just talk about the experience of what you know versus what you say you you think oh this is happening so what you know let's just do easy stuff you know you're going to okay. sit down at a webinar and you know that yes. the webinar is going to happen because you sat down you do it you do it repeatedly every week you've practiced it you know exactly uh, when to be there even when the time changes it's ingrained in my nerves exactly so that's a knowing that you have you know, sometimes the webinar doesn't happen on time, but that's also an experience. But for instance, but that's <laughs> something that you know. You know that when you go, you know, to turn on the light, the light turns on, except when it doesn't. But but most of the time, you trust that the light turns on. You trust it so much that you you might have to turn it on and turn it off a few times <laughs> and say, oh, well, it's there. You know how shocking it is to get into a spa? when there's no power to heat it <laughs> okay but let's just focus on what i'm trying to explain christy okay let's focus on what i'm trying to explain so you have the things that you know and then you have yeah. the other stuff that you want to happen but you don't know it so therefore comes this doubt of is it possible will it happen can i do it but you can it's just the difference of that not knowing to knowing. And when you know that you know that you know, then it happens. It's just like someone says who like wins something and they'll say, I just knew it. I just knew I was going to win. I just knew it. How did they know? It doesn't matter. They did know. And guess what? The universe lined up and brought it to them. So the same thing, it, but it doesn't necessarily always have to be specific things like, uh, money in your bank what you can know better is your own well-being and being focused on your own well-being all of those other things are sort of grandfathered in there so your own well-being means that you have heating that you have food that you have a place to live that you are safe all of those things of your own well-being are included in there and you don't have to really get caught up on focusing on any little other thing that's lack if you're so focused on your own well-being that everything is working out for you, that the universe is conspiring in amazing ways to bring you amazing experiences that will surprise and delight you, all you do is look with expectation out to see what's coming next in a joyous way. And if you're very thankful about it, the universe wants to give you more and more and more and more. Oh. <laughs> My arms are open wide for the next venture. Yeah. If everything, if you approached everything with that idea of, wow, what's coming for me today? How amazing. I it's think amazing. I do. Okay. So that's good. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just, I'm just using this as an example. Oh. So this isn't directly only to you. This is for everybody, but I'm just using some now is what are situations and just the little things like shifting from thinking i don't have this i don't have that i don't whatever well you're right you don't you're right you don't so let's focus on that more and keep it even further away from us because we're reinforcing 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 what we don't have but if we look at it like everything comes at exactly the right moment then you always will have what you need you always will I think it's the anticipation then when you when you believe that um, I'll always have what I need, which on one level I do. It's the um, well, on all levels. Yeah. Well, let's let's move on. Let's go to the part where I get this, and so I could go to the next one. You know, it's the impatience, or that's because you're not in the moment. You're living in the future. Oh. oh. 
Mm. So living in but the moment is aren't also key. Supposed to, aren't you supposed to um, also live in the future when you say, when you imagine that you already have it? If you imagine you already have it, then it's in the now. And you don't notice, you refuse to notice the the lack of it, but you only are certain. The thing is, is that we put conditions on the universe of how things are going to manifest. We give a time deadline. We give a, you know, uh, a certain uh, way that we need it to happen. That's true. You know, and in that way, we, we again, we, we constrict it. But things can kind of come and flow in in many, 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 many different ways. And I'm trying to give you a very good example. Um, okay, I've been playing back and forth with about 300 euros. 300 years has come and gone, come and gone, come and gone out of my reality several times in the last, say, few days. I have an amount of money that I want to take with me to India, for instance, and it's 300 euros. That's not all, but just that part of it is this 300 euros that I have wanted. So I said, fine, I'm going to sell something that I have. And so I have an extra, um, I have an extra musical instrument and I put it, uh, I put it on the, uh, on, on, on the thing to sell it. And this guy called me right away. He's like, I want it, please hold it for me. And then the day that he was supposed to uh, pick it up, he's like, I can't do it. Can we do it on Friday? And then he uh -oh. canceled it on me again. And I thought, you know, this is the money. This is that 300 euros. Come on. I want it. And I just said, whatever happens, it happens. No problem. I just, I'm, I'm not attached to it. So today I, I sent him a message and I said, you know, what time are we going to meet to, to uh you know take my and he says i can't take it now he said something's happened and i can't take it and i thought all right okay whatever just letting it go i know that 300 euros is coming to me so i'm just gonna let it go do you know i i logged into my bank account and there was 324 euros sent back to me from the tax department <laughs> <laughs> And it was like somehow or another in 2013, I paid them 324 euros too much. Oh, very nice. But I didn't know it. So they even paid me before they even, I haven't received the letter to tell me. But I'm just saying that that money, I knew that there was money out there. I knew there was 300 euros out there for me. I just didn't know where it was coming. And I, I really didn't care. I was just like, okay, it's coming. However, it's coming. This is what I say that I want. I, I know that I have it. I didn't know from where. I thought it was from this person, but apparently it kind of might have been, but it wasn't. And then boom, it just sort of showed up. And that all just sort of happens, you know, and it happens like that a lot of the time. Or you'll get a call from someone who says, you know, I have a job for you or I owe you money or you get a discount somewhere else that it balances out. I mean, things like that happen all the time and you just have to just be open to them, you know? And then when they happen, you just be really appreciative and, and realize that that's the flow moment and let more and more and more of that stuff come open, come, come to you and, and to let it, you know, synchronistically surprise you. I would have never thought that the, gov the government was going to give me money. So I got to really celebrate that. I've always owed them money, but now they're giving me money. It's my money. You know, <laughs> it's my money. But it was money that I wasn't attached to. So it kind of come and has come and gone a bunch of times out of my, uh, out of my reality. Boy, that's like being seasick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for your animal thing, I know that you work with the animal welfare. And again, even as much as you're putting into it and you're, you're putting your energy into it, the attachment to the outcome is what gives you the stress of it. You know, if you know that your actions have effect. You know why I know? It's not because I've healed an animal that's uh, going blind because of a tumor or um, because an animal has a, anyway, mm -hmm. it's because when I speak to um, some of the beings that come through mm -hmm. and I'm channeled and I'm told through the channel, you are doing, um, you are doing good or your energy is felt or this, that, or whatever, or the animal appreciates your help. 
It's not because I'm seeing it or I'm feeling it. It's because I have to go through a third party to find out, you know, but you don't really out. you don't really have to go through a third party. You it's because you're not trusting your own knowing that you're having to go through a third party. I think it's I I want reassurance but not all the time because when I do uh, <laughs> because yeah. sometimes I feel this great huge powerful love mm -hmm. when I'm looking at one of the horses um a, a small pony blueberry who won't let me touch him but he really enjoys the kindness that I show him right and then I could feel the love so sometimes I am award I rewarded that way or by looking at the donkeys you know I feel this tremendous love or something like that but it's sort of like I don't want it just during those few times I want it all the time <laughs> well you you do have it all the time uh -huh. you do have it all the time with with blueberry I will tell you the greatest kindness that you're giving him is is knowing that he doesn't want to be touched and then not touching him and giving him his space that is what he appreciates you know he's not really ready to open up yet but he's appreciating you sort of loving him from a distance and allowing him to just be in his own space without you having to touch him he lets me touch him once and only because i give him a biscuit so yeah. i give him a biscuit and I touch him, and then he moves off. <laughs> well, that's so kind of payment. Little, but, but do you uh, understand? Yeah. Like sometimes giving someone what they need is giving them what they need. Yeah. You want to touch him, but yeah. that just maybe isn't what he needs. He needs his own space and to feel comfortable and feel like he's not going to be touched when he doesn't want to be touched. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He gives me knickers, and I love those knickers. It's telling me that, you know, he recognizes me from all the other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I just, like you're saying, I'm not always um, paying attention to it. Well, if you can appreciate every moment, then you do appreciate it. Take the time and really appreciate every moment. You know, everything, everything that we have, if we are busy in the appreciation of it, we don't have time to, to be worried about what's coming in the future or what's going to happen. We really get to experience our, our life in the now. And a lot of times we miss our life. We miss it because we are too busy thinking about, oh, I don't have this. Oh, I don't have that. What's going to oh, happen? Yeah. Where am I going to do? Where's And that's really the, that's, you know, Theos and I have been talking a lot about what is the real message of all of these channelings? What is the real purpose of it? And I know that a lot of people have, you know, different goals. They want to talk to an alien. They want to, you know, find out a question, but really all of it is always bringing you back to you so that you can have the knowing of who you are. Yes, yes. You know? And we have our multidimensional selves and yes, you might have a life on the Pleiades. Yes, you may have a, you know, you may be a Yael, a Sasani, a Sasani, I don't know, <laughs> anything that you can name. But I don't truth, need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with knowing that. But if you listen to all of the messages of all the people that are talking, ultimately, yeah. they're telling you that your answers are within you. Your knowing is within you. And if you remember who you are by going in there and getting the information, then all the other stuff doesn't matter. It really, you know, if we can create our own reality, which we really do, even the stuff we're not, con we unconsciously still create our reality by our focus. But if we really are conscious that we create our own reality, then we would choose in every single moment what we would focus on. So we wouldn't even, you know, as soon as like, because you, you can kind of start spiraling. As soon as you start talking about unpacking things of what's not going well and this and that and all this stuff and here you go and there it is and then finally you're like you you burrowed yourself down into the center of the earth where the mole people are and you don't want to be there no unless you do but you can also once you once you start to do that you can stop it and say okay i'm going to focus on 
my own well-being. I'm going to focus on the well-being of that horse. I'm going to focus on the well-being of my house. I'm going to focus on the well-being of my total life. And I'm going to start appreciating everything that's going well. The stuff that I can personally take action to change, I will do. And the rest of the stuff, I'm going to let go. Oh, yeah. I think mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. Yeah. So when we do that, then, Mind, then yeah. our mentality really, really shifts. It really shifts, and that is the gist of all of the stuff that we've been talking about and all the stuff that's been being taught for these many years. And I will say, you know, okay, you've had some channelers been channeling for, you know, 30 years, but the majority of people really started around 2010, 2000, you know, 12. That's when it sort of burst open and you had all these other people. But if you listen to the collective message of them, then you will realize that that's what they're talking about that the time is now to take the responsibility to start really going inside and really listening and really, really asking the questions to yourself and then hearing what you hear about who you are. And it's not so much to ask about what can I get? What can I have? Those aren't really the answers to anything. Those, th those are so temporary. You know, you get, okay, you get a new car. Great. Okay. And then you get a new iPad, okay, and then, you know, you lose a little weight, you gain a little weight, you get a husband. All that stuff is still very temporary, and it's so unimportant, and un it doesn't mean it's not nice. It's just it, it never will answer your truest question, and it will never put you in your power. What I your think power the difficulty is is trying to figure out um, – you know, it's sort of like when we're going down a path mm -hmm. and we keep going this way and that way by all those things that you were just saying, <laughs> yeah. where you get distracted with this you get and you distracted. get distracted with that, mm -hmm. but you keep on going and it's trying to... It's always trying to pull you back. Well, there's two things always at play in this world. The things that okay. help you remember who you are and the things that help you forget. Oh, I like to forget. <laughs> Well, when you forget, then you are worried about the 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 money in the in the bank account that helps you to pay your bill. Oh, I was thinking of that um, of being able to take my mind off that. No, 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 no. Taking your mind off of it is remembering who you are, because if you realize that you're an eternal being, that nothing can happen to you, then you you don't care about all this other stuff. So, so it's being specific about. Well, no, it's not, okay. Yes and no. What what we're saying is that um, when you when you think about okay, it, I we we just said there's two things going on at any given time. There's remembering yeah. who you are and not remembering. And everything right. in this world is helping to do one or two things. So if you what is true? What is true is that you're an eternal being. Yes. What is that true one's... is that you create your own reality. And that's the hard part. Yes. Okay. But those two things are true. Yeah. Everything else is not true. <laughs> <laughs> so everything that doesn't rem remind you of this is helping you for to forget. Now, when we talk about experience, we came into this world to experience. We came yes. into this world with this agreement that we don't know who we are. Oh. We wake up most, if you think about years past, we're starting to wake up now, but we don't know completely who we are. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. You'd be, Karen, I know this, leave me alone. So, you know, go create something. <laughs> but so <laughs> if you just think about man, as man has sort of been born and evolved, they came in with a lot of things. They didn't understand that they created their own reality. They thought somebody outside of them did it, God. You know, they didn't realize they were also the God that was creating. But, yeah. you know, so, and you had that. And now we've come to a point where we're starting to say, whoa, wait, I'm waking up. Okay. So these these coverings that we have, this, this attachment to the illusion starting to, 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 to fade away, but our world, this three-dimensional world, and we're not 
you know, we're moving into 4D, but we're not there yet. We've just started moving. You know, our world here has a lot of things going on that reinforce the fact that we are, you know, disconnected, that we don't create our reality. I mean, there's a lot of that stuff. So everything that's going on is always a play between these two realities of the real reality of we are this internal being and then this sort of illusionary reflection trying to say that it's real, you know? So we're always in one or two states. And if attachment, Buddha says that attachment is the cause of all suffering, and that's really true. If you are attached to anything, an outcome, your body, anything, you will always be in fear of losing it or not having it or something happening to it. So ultimately, we let go of any even attachment to our physical form. You know, we can appreciate our physical form, but, you know, just like, unfortunately, my, my aunt died two days ago, and my other uncle is also in the hospital. It's very clear that at one moment, they're going to leave their physical form, you know, but the attachment to that can also be a lot of suffering. The attachment to them being here can cause a lot of suffering. But if we really know that my aunt and my uncle and myself and you and everybody here is um, is is eternal, then even though we might miss them, hanging out with them, sharing a laugh with them, we will we wouldn't have the pain because we knew that they were nothing happened to them, nothing has actually happened to them, nothing is really happening to you. It's only an experience you're having, and that's what that's the big thing that. If, if we can drive that home, is that nothing happens to you. It's only an experience that you're having. So yeah. you can also have fun with it and go, wow, isn't this crazy? I mean, how messed up can this be? Look at the experience that... <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> look at the experience the U.S. is having at the moment with their current political system. Uh, yeah. It's an experience that they are collectively having together. And how fascinating is that? You know. It's quite a thrill <laughs> ride. <laughs> it's a thrill ride. It's a thrill um, ride. And it's really, and it, in some ways, is, as crazy as this, I mean, in some ways, it's really fun because you never know what's going to happen next. You think it's going to go this way? You're thinking, no, there's no way. There's no way it's not going to happen. And then just, you know, what a creative being that president is. He comes up with stuff that nobody has ever thought of before. <laughs> he has the way to thrill and excite us in ways that has never been done before on this planet. So... Well, he's channeling somebody, some crazy. <laughs> he's, he's, I mean, in, in the ultimate way, he's a creator being just like we are, and he's having a grand old time. Yeah, and that's Playing. true. We don't really know what's going on because we only know what the media is telling us. So, Yeah, well, we know what both sides are telling us, and we, we can see, but, yeah. Oh. But he's, he seems to be having a grand old time with the whole thing. You know, he sits around yeah. and thinks of all kinds of weird stuff he can come out with. Yeah, it's a reality show. <laughs> it really is. It really is. That's what yeah. happens when you elect a reality show personality. Yeah. Steve, do you have a, a microphone or no? I'll have more than a microphone. I have the microphone I use for rapping and singing. All so right. Are you crystal rapping? clear. <laughs> so so of, of what we're discussing, do you have any thoughts about it? Um, yeah, I, I just awoke last July, so, uh, I, I'm, I'm coming to grips with all this and I don't, I've, I don't stress over things I used to already yeah. finances and I have two kids and a wife. And of course we live paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Cause like 90% of the country where the working poor, but, um, I, I, I don't stress out over it. I just enjoy it. Um, I have a good time just telling people our crazy reality and, uh, and 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 uh, and I'm focused right now on something that requires a lot of meditation, which I need better practice at. But uh, 
it's just I think the setting the the timeline like you said earlier I think that's what I'm doing because I just want to be like a spiritual guru now because <laughs> I'm awake I was like okay I'm ready I know this is a Palladian mission and I know I have a general sense of what I'm supposed to do so let's you know gear me up let's go well what is uh, it you're supposed to do um well the task at hand well I I've identified my three spirit guides uh the one that's in charge of making me learn, that's part of the reason I'm here right now, is giving me two reading assignments. One's a pretty tough read because it's seventh dimensional information filtered down to third. Um, the other one I'm waiting is Jim is, is Jim and uh, Max's new book. That will be coming in a it's little out. bit. It's out. You can yeah. download it now. I bought oh, it. Oh, can I? Okay. Yeah. On the Kindle. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I got the I got the hard copy coming in the mail as well. Okay. But um, here you, you can see me. I, I'm in storage. I got a bunch of mess. The... Um, behind me but here you are so uh, yes so anyway um my my next task is to connect up oh, look at my camera my hey. next task is to connect with my uh, main spirit guide it's, it's a uh, palladian female which makes sense i'm like the most effeminate straight guy around my <laughs> voice doesn't sound like it but in yeah my personality is yeah. my voice is uh i found out that's one of my spirit guides that that uh, gives me that's projecting voice and the communicative abilities is because i'm going to be teaching that's part of my mission i'm going to be outreaching to christians specifically because i was a fundamentalist for okay. about seven years yeah and so that's going to be part of my task here is to uh gently and kindly reach out to them when the aliens start coming and they are losing their heads you know and um trying to prep people right now even through a strategic uh information i don't give everybody all information it depends who i'm speaking to so i'm already trying to be an audience you know, sensitive. But the ne the next thing I want to do is connect to this Palladian, my Palladian guide, because I want I I, I want to connect with that Palladian energy that's within me, and the and the and the divine feminine, which is very strong in me. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of light. Well, not just besides the Pleiades, I have a ton of lives in Lemuria, so I'm very much more on the feminine side. And I, I, I and knew that when I was growing up that the, the macho um, rules of society didn't resonate with me ever. I understand the whole sense of having to compete with everything or one up people with ego games. You know, I didn't, it's like, of course, cooperation is, is everywhere I've, I've been before I was here. Um, but I, I, I just, I just feel the next step is to connect with her and, and not just for guidance, but to also get to that sense of an energy. So that fills me more up and less of this third density programming, which I'm still shedding like a snake skin, you know? So I, I know that's, but, but channeling isn't something I've achieved yet. I've had some a couple of clairvoyance uh, glimpses, if you will. Uh -huh. So that's exciting, and 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 that's that's something I'm I'm also like trying to put a deadline on. I was like, I want to see all the ETs around me right now because I got to see a couple seconds here and there. You know, my uh, Palladian guy actually put her hand right through past my third eye. I got to see that. I tried to look at her and my other two guides. I didn't know that they were my guides at the time. They just I just thought they were ETs following me around. But it was very blurry because my third eye, my pineal gland, obviously needs to be decalcified and developed. Uh, but it was very blurry. Only can make out. And I, I got a reading later by Evan Teller, and he told me who they were. And not, then, then in retrospect, I could tell because the the only features I could make out of the three that were standing together were uh, one was an, an definitively an insectoid be being that was taller than the others, and that was uh, my mantis being who calls himself Martin. That's not his name, obviously. That's who what he wants me to call him because that's my last name. But uh, no, so so right now it's just about being patient and, uh, and 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 doing the spiritual practice, the spiritual work, because you have to do that. We need to for for the DNA transformation, and um, whereas we are all programmed to want everything now, like yesterday. So that, that's all. And I'm just I'm just asking everyone for advice, like uh, how can I can I make that happen faster? How can I connect with her and have a regular commun 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 communication line open? Uh, it, more more quickly than what's currently happening, so it's fine. I know I'll be fine in the end. I'm just really giddy and I'm uh, excited. But well, just for for what are you what are you um, what are you doing to connect then? Uh, meditation mostly, um, putting out the intention, saying I, I, this, this initial connection. I just want to feel my Palladian energies, my divine feminine energies, because that's who you are, um, and and just to share that heart chakra love as well. And uh, and so I know I know she's excited to do that, but I have to be I have to be suitable hardware to receive that, you know. So well, are you? Uh, what kind of meditation are you doing? And are you doing um, it consistently? Yeah, I mean, I'd more. 
I don't do it long enough. That's a problem. I do can do consistently. I fall asleep a lot of times, but I, I try to do it. Uh, waking up. Sometimes I you try to use music. I have a six year old and a three year old, so I get interrupted all the time. And so that's difficult, but that's, that's all right. I mean, that's part of that. That was going to be part of my path. I wouldn't have woken up at this time if I wasn't supposed to be interrupted all the time. So yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah, do, I do the, uh, circuit with my hands for energy, energy circuitry. And, uh, and I uh, just try to get into myself. I, I, I watch the uh, thoughts pass like clouds and try to brush them aside like leaves. And uh, then usually something around me uh, happens. My wife has something to say to me or my three-year-old barges in the room. So Yeah. Do you, yeah. I, so do you, do you do any toning? Uh, I, I, I actually, before I was awake, I did binaural beats. I have tried that a couple of times. Okay. Uh, okay. You lay down when you meditate? Uh, most of the time. Yeah, you We're should sit up. It should sit up, okay? Because the the, twi the two times I got glimpses of clairvoyance, um, I, I was laying down, so I think that's why. But yeah, I need to. I need to. Well, if you're falling asleep, you need to sit up. You need yeah, to be right. a little bit more active um, state. If you want to, I'll, I'll take you into a meditation just to let you connect real okay. quick. And okay. Okay. Because a lot of the times, meditation, we're sending out affirmations, we're asking questions, we're doing all this stuff. The real part of meditation is to not be talking. Right. You should be listening. It should be being still and it should be aligning to your your core. And I'll tell you something, as much as you have guides, you have your three guides you've identified, they're really just a higher aspect of you, right. a multidimensional aspect of yourself. So the only thing you're really connecting to is you. You know, but it's the part of there. The thing is, is that you're co you're connecting to a part of you who really knows who they are, and so that part of you is trying to raise up your vibration, trying to lift you up, so that you can actually also remember who you are. So that's the the point of it. And and sometimes you know you have a multi dimensional self that's a Pleiadian, that's a angel, that's a all kinds of things. So. All of the stuff that you're connecting to is it's nothing that is outside of you. It's only you manifest in these different different uh, forms. But it's you trying to communicate with you. So you don't have to go too far away. You just have to be in your alignment. And probably you'll discover all kinds of other guides and all kinds of other beings. But these are probably the main ones at the moment. But the big thing is the listening that you need to cultivate not just asking, 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 but listening. Get, you know, I, I will tell you, I asked you a question and, and you really talked for a very long time, which was great because you told us everything that was going on, but you didn't give a break at all. So I thought, well, maybe in meditation, he's also not giving a break to the listen. First, the, first, the first time I did a, a visualization <laughs> of my uh, yeah. chakras, yeah, 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 to what you just said, um, my... My light blue one, the throat chakra, was overactive. I thought it was great that it was huge. It was like, oh, that means I'm really strong. That means it needs to be toned down. But yes, I'm a talker, but that's part of my mission. I'm going to be, I talk to people at my job um, every day about this. Yeah. So, but it's also, also to realize that, you know, you, when you, when you're talking to people, you're, you're not, you're not fixing them or saving them or anything and you're only offering to them a different perspective something that you've learned that you want to share with them but it, it's not even that important that they know you know it's just it's just something that you you can share to help them along their path and it, it unlike christianity the transformation doesn't need to be instant there's no altar call you know right. you're not you know they're not not saved there's nothing to save them from no i think i'm trying to uh change the mass consciousness by raising awareness i think that's, that's not, I, well, I know the way that the way that you will change the mass consciousness is by raising your own because there's something that they say in hinduism that when one person becomes awake their ancestors rejoice their all of the beings that are around them rejoice. Your your higher consciousness beings that you're wanting to communicate with are you. So they're also trying to bring up your vibration so that there's just one more person in the mass consciousness. Now, if you realize that once you come up, then other parts of yourself will also come up. 
you know, we don't know how many incarnations you have on this planet at the moment, you know. So, I, I was told when I got past my progression, he could only see one, but it might have just been I'm not that interested in my Earth incarnations. So, but he says, I, I probably haven't been here very much. So, well, who's to know? I mean, to be honest, everybody is just, we're all one. Right. So there's really no difference between you and me. You know, do you understand that concept or no? Oh, the oh, oneness? Yeah. That was the trigger for my awakening. Uh, Jonathan C. Martin stated that in one of the channelings, and that was the, uh, that's what, uh, that was, that's what started the Kundalini movement, if you will. Mm -hmm. He just said, I am you, you are me. We are one. The Yael was talking through that. But uh, that was, that was the moment. That was the trigger. Okay. Cool. All right. So, Sit up. Put your head up. All right. Sit up with your head, like, and everyone else can do this. And just put your feet on the ground or however that you can. You can you can do your meditations like sitting in a chair or sitting Indian style, however you really want to. But the best way to do it is to sit up. Put your head up. Don't lift it down. Just move. and then put your hands on your lap, but put them out open so that they're like this, but on your knees. Okay. This is a receptive position. You're receiving. I'm Which an antenna, right? Huh? I'm an antenna. No, you are a you're a vessel. Well, you can be an antenna if you want to. Okay. But however, however it works for you to understand. But it's you're rece you're receiving. So yeah, you're like an antenna. And you just you just want to take a deep breath. And what you want to do, and with no force, just a deep breath in and like let it out so that your body sort of relaxes. And when you close your eyes, you just want your consciousness to sort of just settle right here, just in a very gentle, non-forced way, but just that just feels just feels good. But that's where your third eye is, this place, this calcified place. Uh -huh. We will tell you that, you know, everyone talks about the calcification of their third eye, but yet everybody seems to still have experiences. It may or may not even be true. It depends on if you choose to subscribe to that idea. But just for this moment, know that your third eye is, is going to open and it's opening. So the calcification is, 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 you know, will fall away. That that's a little bit of a fear thing to tell people that they don't have the ability to connect. Of course, we have the ability to connect, or we wouldn't be able to connect. Okay. Uh -huh. So I would let go of that idea because it's only limiting, and you're an unlimited creator be being. And if you can create calcification on your pineal gland, you can also create no calcification on your pineal gland. So your your focus is here on your <clears throat> third eye. And you're just going to take a deep breath in through your nose. You're going to hold it for just a second. And you just blow it out. And as you blow it out, you just feel your whole body relax. And then we're going to just do a tone. We're going to do the tone of Om. And we're going to do it like this. We're going to, we're going to, and, and my microphone tends to cut out, but I want you to hear what I do. I want you to go, Om. And I want you to hold the mmm, the vibration of the mmm, where your lips are closed, like mmm. Okay. Also until the breath is gone. So you've got oh. And then one more time. You have to do it with me now. Okay. Okay, ready? Oh. And you do, we'll do it three times. I want you to do it three times. Okay. And just sit up straight because you're not sitting up straight. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I have the chair I'm in is leaning forward. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. don't lean forward. Sit up straight. Right. And I just want you to do it three times.
Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. I, what I wanted you to do after you did that is just to sit in the silence. I will say to you, you don't have to force it. And it's not about how loud you are or how strongly you do it. Right. It becomes a very nice, gentle flow. So I want you to do it again. All right. Sorry. That's I'm, a, a sing, I'm a singer. So it's like, perform, I need to perform. You know? <laughs> well, when you're, I'm a singer as well. Right. We're not performing for anyone. We're, we're connecting to the divine. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. There's a respect that goes with that. There's a reverence that goes with that. You are, you are tapping into your divine nature, and there's, that's an honorable thing that we, we have the ability to do. We're born equipped to do that. So there's a respect that needs to come with that. It should also be an excitement of, hi, I'm, I'm actually able to tap into myself. You're not performing. If you're channeling, you're also not performing. You're serving humanity. And so if you ask yourself why you want to channel, that really needs to be the answer so I can be in service, not so I can fix people. But there has to be a humility that comes with it. And it's great you're a performer, but you're not here to perform. You're here oh, no, the channeling perform. isn't about dot, 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 dot. That's, that's, that's about But, but I'm just saying, but, the, but um, I, I want you to stay with me right. on how you can connect. Correct. Okay. Yeah? So right. let's do it again. And this time, don't make the ohm like, oh, make it, just make it a natural breath out. You have great breath control because you're a singer, but you also have the ability to let it just flow out of you in such a natural way. There'll become a moment, if you can find it, where you can actually sit into the sound. The sound doesn't, it's not like any breath is even coming out. And it's almost like you have a hang time where you can almost hang in that sound forever. That sat, that time is really when you're making your connection and making your alignment. Did you see anything when your eyes were closed? Uh, no, not just then. I wouldn't, but yeah. yeah. So just so if you if if you can just at this moment, like maybe focus on a triangle, which is a uh -huh. great uh, which is a great symbol for connection. But just do it again. Just do it two times, and when you're finished, I want you to just sit there in the feeling of it because I want to hear what you feel. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Take a deep breath in. And I want you to just let it out slowly. And then just make your own soft, soft and steady. Oh. Take another deep breath in. Do you feel your shift in your energy? Yes, a little more centered. That's alignment. All right. Now, when you do this, right. every time you do this, you can go deeper and deeper. It's like drilling into ground. And every time you just go a little deeper and you go a little deeper, and you will get to a place where you can hold that space. It's called the after echo. You can stay in that alignment space for much longer. And that's when all of the information comes. Because when you when you start to go in, the information doesn't, at one moment it stops being words. It starts being like, they call it like blocks of thought. But so much of the stuff that we get is not somebody talking to us in words like we're talking now. It just becomes a knowing. You just know. Just And, and what you know is directly relevant to where you are in the moment but as you go deeper and deeper, your knowing just grows and grows and grows. So that's what that, that aligned feeling is what you should be striving for. 
And then you will have the communication with your guides. What will probably happen is as you connect with them, they'll just help you go deeper and go deeper and go deeper. But that's really how you do it. Okay. Yeah. And I, I would do, I would ohm two or three times. I would sit there. And then when you start to lose it, ohm again and just go back and go back. Great music to listen to would be like a binaural beats, something like that, that helps you. The binaural beats don't do it for you. What they do is they hold the static sound that, you know, holds that ability to let you continue to do it. But they don't do it for you. You're the one that actually does it. You go down and it's listening. I, you know, some people say their energy raises. I think it becomes more alignment. And I, th I think you're going down. You're going deep as opposed to going up. You're going down. That's just the way I feel it. But that's what you really need to be doing. And, 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 and take that time to, to do it. I know you can maybe go sit in your car for five minutes or something so that you do have the, that little space. But give yourself that gift because it will you will start to have your connection. But it, your connection is there. Your guide isn't going to talk to you like, hello, hi down there, Steve, I have something to say to you. Right. You've got to go in and go to where that energy is and line up with that vibration. Okay. Does Thank that, you. Does that feel good? That did feel good. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So do you have any other questions? Uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <Are you welcome? laughs> Okay. Christine or Don, did are you gonna talk today or no? <laughs> He's hiding from me. <laughs> okay. Christine, are you still there? Yeah. Did yep. You, did you do that? Did you do that meditation too or no? Yes. How did that help for you? Um well I don't meditate very well <laughs> unless I'm doing something physical you know, like uh, washing dishes, and then I'll be able to meditate or putting a puzzle together. And I, it seems like I have to have my physical self doing something so that my mental self can um, right. go off somewhere. But when you're, so when, so when you do something like a meditation, like we just did, can you do that? Or is that too hard for you to sit still and find that stillness? Yeah. 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 It'd be easier if I was doing something physical, like brushing a donkey. Yeah, when well, that repetitive moment, yeah, you can find that that stillness and that centeredness. Yeah, you know, I but always get information when I'm in the shower. You know, ah. you're, you're showering and you're you're just not you're not thinking, and then, or if when I'm walking the dog and I'm just in that moment, you know, uh -huh. I get all kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. Especially sitting in my spa, I no longer have access to. <laughs> you, you know, there may be a reason why that spa is not, you don't have access to it. Oh, I, yeah, I'm sure. Cleaning out, cleaning it out. And, yeah, well, it's I'm because sure. you're attachment to it and thinking that's the only way that you have the connection. Maybe it's saying to you, no, you got to find another way now. Yeah. <laughs> or giving you the opportunity to find another way. You know, um, sitting still for a certain amount of time, I start itching, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to scratch my knee. I have to move this. I have to do that. I, Yeah. Well, those are Too the hard. distractions that they talk about when you're going into meditation, that you have to let those thoughts sort of roll by, and you've got to get oh, past that going. moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I jump on that train, and I keep going. <laughs> Instead of returning back to the, to the terminal. <laughs> I see. Max is sending me messages in Skype. Uh oh. Oh. I don't understand what's happening. One one second, because there, I I think I made the wrong link. Can we not paste the link on the um? Because the link wasn't pasted on the YouTube. Alex, can you not post this link on the um the, to the Google page? Can you not? Is it, so are they not able to see in uh, YouTube or are they not able to see in... Uh... No, the YouTube is working. So Max is saying this is, people can't join. We need to put the link on the, on the um, Hucolo page as well. It is there. It is there. Okay. I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know what he's talking about. Not, not the link to the YouTube page, but the link to no, the no, Google. No, no. I, I post uh, at your post. I didn't delete it. Okay. And I, I post a comment with a participation link. Okay. I comment with the link. Okay. So, All right. I don't know. It is uh, everywhere. It is emailed uh, <laughs> in Hukolo page private, in Hukolo club. So, well, maybe, you know, sometimes when things aren't possible, maybe it's just because it's for us and not for anybody else. You never know. No, it's for everybody. I'm just saying for them at this very moment because they can't seem to oh, find oh, way. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe it's not done. Okay. All right. So, please continue. Huh? I didn't hear what you said the last thing. Please continue. Okay, thank you. Well, my question is, do you have any questions about anything? No. If I want to know something, when I need to know it, I will know it. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I learned that lesson and I practiced that. So. Well, it's true. If you trust that the information that you want will come to you, then yeah. it will come to you. It's more of a feeling and... Uh, uh, if you develop your, uh, let's say, solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra, and yeah. after that uh, you you will decode it in the in the process or in the head, and get some pictures or feelings. You get something. Something will come to you in some kind of way. Either a picture, yeah. Yeah. some kind of event will happen. Yes, something maybe uh, around you something is happening, and you have. Um, let's say uh, triggers something in your uh, imagination yeah uh, exactly but, but you need to play attention and uh, how do i say in the buddhism have the practice not to dissolve the ego because that is you you cannot do, do that i hear all about that and it's stupid idea you just train train the ego um let's say elevate the ego yeah well the ego is um, it's a property like a programming computer is basic basically it's made for surviving and comfort like uh, it, um, the this program prevent you for dangers or something like that 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 is why more more people don't take chance and make steps in their life because they they have the comfort whatever comfort is uh, let's say not so well or negative uh, they they live in that bubble and uh, don't progress or evolve and evolving not in society uh, we have a word for that spiritually but spiritually it's a part of uh, a human being so yeah, there's a there's a you know there's there's a thing that there's a question I see from that comes from people all the time and they'll say, um, I feel drawn to Pleiadians. Do I have a Pleiadian connection? And what you're talking about noticing, you know, the reason that you ha feel drawn to Pleiadians is because you have the Pleiadian connection, not the other maybe, way around. Maybe, maybe. Or um, just uh, how do I say? Oh, well, let's um, like a curiosity. Do you mean well, what is what is in the in the Bible is read uh, read uh, Elohim make the people in their image, right? Right. So so um, the the kid in in you yes in general a kid wants to play. If, right. uh, I, I, if I say to you, um, well, Karen, I um, dream about you. You have connection with uh, Arcturian. Next thing, your all capacity in the head, because it's playful, is nothing uh, to worry about. You think of that. You you feel something. You pick a frequency. So if you feel good, you say yes, I have it. You you may have it. Or you may not, but I think you will find some friends there. So it's not about that. Right now you are on the earth and you are a person of the earth. 
So right. uh, the p past life or something like that is not past life. Uh, it's um, parallel dimensions, parallel universes. You just make links like you dream about something like it's like your city, but it's not. But you feel so strong emotionally. Um, even you have uh, memories in that dream right. about that life. So that connection, that bridge, um, is something. Maybe it is truly, or maybe is a an in inception made by angels, spiritual guys to show you something. Not uh, really in the objective way, like. Um, images or what is there but the feeling you know the feeling that you wake up in the morning that is more precious and more important this is how what i find so until you would not develop the astral body very very good and you have lucid dreaming all this um, is like, uh, well, everything is an illusion. If you want to everything is an illusion, and everything but, is part but, of us. But, yeah. But if you, if you want to know really, really good stuff and the real stuff in this illusion, yes, you play the role. Uh, when you go astrally, you can do it right now. You close your eyes. You go alpha and then theta, and you are there. Right. You start feeling, you are there. Mm -hmm. So what you're feeling, what you, um, let's say, what your is, um, how do I say? Well, per se, is what is your frequency that you, you will attract. Right. So until you not uh, see clear, and have lucid dreaming, you don't know what's really happened because that is like uh, you can do teleportation instantly, whatever in the universe. So um, you may have a lot of friends, you may have um, a lot of children, like hybrid children. Yeah. You don't know. Um, I have some, let's say, encounters in my home, like. Yeah, uh, I have um, like kid in me, like a, a little spoon. Who I make the coffee, and uh, I was like that because um, the measure in there for the Nescafe and the sugar was right. It's like a, a ritual for me. Yeah, so that that uh, teaspoon um, Someday, one morning, it disappeared. But for good, and I look at that, well, can that be? And I have, so someone was watching and was playful. Right. I hope it's uh, okay and useful for him or her, or whatever. So, but it's fun. And uh, we'll wake up little by little. And it will be fun. It's fun to be right now on the earth. It's, yeah, it's, it's a good time to be here. It's the most pressure, precious time. Uh, and for the people who listen this and watch this, uh, it, even sometimes uh, it's hard for them or in life, put a smile on their face and uh, take the, the feelings in life and um, what is going on right now because it's more important and um, to think positively, um, very, very positively, no matter what. Exactly. Well, that's the thing of like, again, focusing on what you want and not what you don't want to, to, to believe in your own well-being, holding that is the most important thing because if you can do that, then you really do pull more and more of it to you. Because in fact, things might be hard in a way, but they're never as hard as they've been in the past. The life is going much better than it has. People can say, oh, well, I had more money 10 years ago. Okay, but you know, 
money isn't everything. Everyone measures everything by how much money they have in their bank. You know, that's not the most important way to measure your life. You know, the most important thing is how much do you know about yourself? How awake are you? How are you, how are you connecting to your higher self? What are you really knowing about the world? If you want to stay in the 3D world, yeah, focus on your finances, focus on your bank account, focus on what you don't have. That's really a 3D thing. And that's the thing we were talking about earlier of, you know, that's designed to keep you distracted. And if you want to stay in that distraction, then yeah, focus on those things. And that's that's also okay. But if you want to really be open and experience amazing things that you can't buy, that you can't, you know, you can only find inside of yourself in your inner knowing, then those things tend to fall away. So you have to decide what it, what it is you want, not you specifically, Alex, but I'm just saying people in general, what is it they really hold dear? What is it they really want to, to know? You know, the world is going to change. We're going to be changing it by what we focus on. And, and the world is going in a very positive direction and it's going in a very negative direction. And in some ways, in one moment, it's going to split. So you have to decide on which, where do you want to be? Where do you want to do it? Where yeah. Do you go? I, I am um, like, so let's say, 50% with you. But <laughs> I think um, in my case, I realize uh, like um, if for people who have uh, families or something like that, yeah, um, it's okay. Um, do your thing. Um, yeah, always meditate, to do your thing. Meditate. Make time for, um, let's say, watching YouTube's um, video about this. Um, join some webinars, but you need to be supportive for your family. Of course. So it's it's important to to meditate and uh anchor more rooting more because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, the tendency for me i was very aerial you know you were very what aerial high frequency okay and, uh, i was happy i didn't care i go in uh, in the city um and have a good time and don't care about anything so I realized by experience, and uh, <laughs> that's a perfect example. Um, you need you need to to root root more more uh, that energy. You do it for Gaia, and absolutely you will do it for you. And make plan planning like important planning what you are doing because yes, um, money is not the objective, but money are good. No, money, there's nothing wrong with money. Money is but not necessary. Not the goal, yeah. yeah. You have, you know, just because you're spiritual doesn't mean you don't need to take your responsibility. You Spiritually, know. for me, is like uh, you know, uh, I need to eat or drink water. So yeah, um, it has become like that. I integrate it. I speak just. I, I put a label on that because it is how people understand. Mm -hmm. But if, when you say spiritual. I'm a spiritual guy or woman. Well, you it's like a joke. You separate yourself. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm uh, uh, yeah. Donna, whatever. No, yeah. it's not like that. So well, it's true. It's exactly true. If anything, as a spiritual person, you 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 need to, like you said, be, need to be more rooted, to be yeah. more aware, to be more in your body than anything else, because. You, as 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 someone who understands it is open why wouldn't you you're here to experience you're not here to get out of your body you're here to experience this life the the difference is, is when you're awake you're you're driving the car even that much more and oh so by the way hmm? yeah by the way i have um one more thing if you are rooting uh your um your life will get better and um, once in psychological way mm -hmm. and then and then um, you will see and you will uh, have events in your life more rapidly 
Like, yeah, yeah. Like let's say let's say you are a good person, but you have uh, negative thoughts. Yes. Yeah. If you are rooting, you are attract very rapidly some negative um, events in your life. But you will, um, let's say, educate yourself rapidly in that, and you will change yourself because um, the planet will reflect to you what you need. If you're not doing that, uh, you're not doing routing, uh, all the energy comes down and what the, what the body transforms it is like a static energy. And uh, you can go visit temples and whatever, uh, play the Tibetan ball. Next day, you will have the same um, biofield because you will not change anything. And by the way, if you make routine, you will integrate more or, um, the, the keys and the messages for your guides, angels, um, and so on. Exactly, because when you're saying rooting, you mean grounding, grounding, correct? Yes, your static energy goes in the in right. the earth. Yeah. Well, the whole, yeah. The point the point is is that it, it you know it, it, it doesn't make any sense to have a lot of knowledge that you're not integrating into your life, you wow. know. And so all of the stuff that you're talking about that comes to you is there for you to clear it, for you to integrate it, for you to be able to like look at it, understand it and move past it and learn something from it. But you, like you said, you can claim to be a spiritual person. And again, you in a way separate yourself. I'm right. spiritual, you know, but we still are living in this world. And the idea is to live in this world in the most beautiful way with the knowledge that we have, with the knowing that we have, integrating all of these beautiful energies, looking at the things that we need to shift, to change, because they will come to us. They come to us not to give us a hard time, but they come to us to say, okay, this is something that's going on with you that you need to take care of. And when you do that, then it's just another wonderful experience. You know, it might be hard, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It might be another hard experience that even teaches you more and more and more about yourself, how that your actions have created a certain thing, how there's something about you that's out of alignment with your true self. It's all about coming back into alignment. So all of the things that come to us are really gifts of opportunity to find out even more. But if we're only head in the clouds and we're not grounded, then they have it has no effect. And you can also, like Christine was saying earlier, get off the track and get even more distracted then and, and get focused on that. People ask a lot of time about spiritual gifts and things like that, but those are really never should be the goal. The goal should always be your own alignment, your own knowing, and yeah. to, to stay in the alignment. Because right, the shamadi, shamadi have just uh, uh, side effects for the yeah, they're the tools. side effects of awakening. Yes, yeah, right. yeah. So, so I want to share something um, sure, for go ahead. people um, if they have difficulty with routing because yeah. some some of people don't have uh, let's say middle channel open and something mm -hmm. like that. Um, you can do it like. A, as showering months in yeah in the mountain you can do it in your house you yeah. stay in the meditation posture uh, under the shower and you need to that water go down to the pipe you know in the ground right. the metal pipe but the shower the water come uh, over you wash yourself and you command effectively um, the the static energy go outside with the water. And after that, after shower, um, well, you need to have a, a cleansing in the house. You know, the static energy in the house, right. have uh, music or something, right. open the windows for the air, um, fresh air. Uh, if, if you have um, devices for negative ions, very good. Is very good for health. Keep you keep you young and healthy. So 
after uh, the exercise of the shower, meditation in the shower, you will do the new meditation uh, in the room uh, and you ask for guidance and support for angels, spiritual guides, and you will change your biofield because that static energy it's out from your body and um, you you have like uh, is the question i like this question very much and uh, people that i mm, get new in my life i i ask this question what do you see at the glass the half the full of the half uh, empty empty and yeah. say it's empty or uh, the half empty or uh, half full and i said no i like uh, all the glass empty because i can put whatever i like in there and it's 100 percent you understand so yeah. this is with the static energy and you your biofilm so if, if you clean cleansing and uh, something good or maybe are people that are going the all the way around because they wanted to is the same principle so no i understand what you're saying so, so grounding is very important and so is you know you, yeah. you should be both you should be able to be open to the spiritual stuff but also have your feet on the ground it's about being a well-balanced person well-rounded it's it's about mastering things it's not only about being spiritual it's about being a full the fullest human being that you can be ultimate yes sorry ultimate surprise yes yeah yeah exactly so this has become a this was a very different webinar than what I, that i what i planned on doing i i just really wanted to talk about the the ultimate goal of all of these messages because everyone's asking so many questions and it, it seems like sometimes we miss the big big point the big point is that all of this is just to pull us back to ourselves and all of our answers are really inside and 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 that's really what my cats wanted to share but i just really want to pull everyone back to that to realize that all of your answers are within inside of you all of your knowing is within you and to don't look for it outside you know channeling is great and everybody is a channel so there's a reason why everybody's a channel so that they can get their own information and it's really going to ultimately come from within everybody so christine what do you think of that are you testing me no. <laughs> I think that you guys are on the right track. Oh, thank you. No, but we are, we're all, you know, you, if you think about how everyone is experiencing, everyone is waking up and you think, what are they waking up to? They're not waking up so that they can just run and sit and talk to a channel. They're waking up so that they can learn how to make their own connection, right? What's, um, what was interesting? Because if you think about it, if everybody's awake, then what do they need channels for? What you were saying, though, was when we are talking to our um, spirit guides and so on and so forth, it's really ourselves. Yeah. So now when you think about when we're when um, we're listening to a channel, mm -hmm. who is it that we're really listening to since we're all part of the one? We are. But there's a there's a difference. There's a difference because we are all part of the one, but we have direct lines of communication. We have direct lines. So. Yes, it is you. I mean, if you want to stretch the analogy big, yes, it is you. You know, you can you can get me on that point. Um, but there's also there's a difference between asking from the outside in and asking from the inside out. But don't you think um, because we are in this human um, world or we're in this third dimensional reality mm -hmm. that we do need um, confirmation sure what of course we do we need the confirmation but sometimes the confirmation is never a, the confirmation is never replaced by the experiential knowing you know that was the reason why i wanted steve to experience that alignment right you can talk about it all the time you can watch it on a webinar you can read about it 
you can, you know, see other people do it, but until you do it and until you experience it, until you know it, and you know yeah. experientially what it is, then it's only just hearsay. You know, it's then only like you, you can take it on good authority that it's true, but until you really experience it, until you really know it, uh -huh. it's never true for you. Then it's once you get to that part, wouldn't you then say that that's being in the fourth dimensional? Yes, it's a way of living in the fourth dimension. Yes. And so when you kind of get that alignment, what happens is it's just like, it's like being on top of a mountain and being able to see things that you could never see before. It's having that perspective. Third dimension is like being just right in it. You're just in it, you know, you're, you're, your light reacting, bill is reacting, your light reacting. bill is due. You're writing the check. You know, <laughs> I mean, you're in it. You're you're the one. When you're third dimension, you fall down, you skin your leg, and that's sort of the end of it. When you're fourth dimension, if you fall off that hill, oh, no, you're... it's not falling off the hill. It's 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 also when you're fourth dimensional and you fall down and you skin your leg. Not only do you skin your third dimensional, your physical leg, but you also have the perspective of the experience of it and understanding that it's an experience. And you are, you start to be able to see more the workings of the universe and how things are working. And it's not a great, it's not a great example that I'm giving you. Let me give you a different example. It's about, <laughs> it's about being like a person walking on the ground and they're surrounded, they're in a city and they see all the beautiful buildings, but they never see anything from the, the bird's eye view, the upper view. And when you're fourth dimensional, you have more of that view. So you have a better understanding of how things are working together. You understand you're the, you're the third dimensional being walking on the street and you just think you're walking on a straight street and you see a street that goes to the right, street that goes to the left. But when you're in the fourth dimension, not only are you seeing the being walking, Tommy, be quiet. You're seeing the being walking. You're also able to see from down the buildings that that whole city is just a beautiful grid of interlaced things. And a lot of things are moving. You just have a different perspective. And in order to get that perspective, you have to, you have to see things from a higher vantage point. When um, we're dreaming yeah. and we go from um, dreaming and that's sort of like a passive part and to the lucid dreaming, which is the actual taking an active part in it, mm -hmm. would that be about the same thing? When no, uh -uh. no, because in our lucid dream and in our dream state, we're still, we're still, we have less coverings we have less things like we can fly we can do stuff but we may or may not actually have the perspective the higher perspective we're still us the dreamer there's the in our consciousness we can be asleep and dreaming but we may not have the higher consciousness perspective hmm. you can dream third dimensionally and still fly you know <laughs> yeah so well, it's interesting to start dreaming uh, fourth dimensionally because um, it's sort of like. Well, there'll be no difference. When you're fourth dimensional, you will have the higher perspective. You might shift into it now, when you've now, now that you're thinking about it, now your consciousness not, might let you experience it, but you will have the higher perspective. The one thing that like I can say that Theos always shows me is how there's always many multidimensional things at work at any given time. Yeah. You know, it's not just the thing that's happening. It's how it fits into the larger scheme of things and also how what is the higher spiritual meaning of it. There's always several different things that are going on and they see it and understand it completely in instantly and they inst they understand it instantly and simultaneously. You know, so, whereas, if, so mm. if we third dimensional person mm -hmm. goes into um, seeing the different dimensions or can see their you can't see them as a third dimensional person. Okay. That's the, that's the third dimensional thing. It's not a, um, it's not a malady. It's not a, a, you know, deficit you have. 
It's, it's just the nature of the third dimensional person. They don't come equipped with that. It's like buying a computer that doesn't, well, it's like buying a computer. Remember in the old days? Well, the, the computer that didn't have Wi-Fi, you always had to plug in. Yeah. Okay, well, it, you can turn the Wi-Fi up as high as you want. If there's such a thing, you can hold the Wi-Fi right next to it. The computer can't pick it up. Yep. It's not possible. It's not made to do that. The, I mean, the third dimensional person is is as limited as that. Of course, you start to pick stuff up and you start to awaken up. But when you really start to pick st stuff up, it's because you wake up. And then all of a sudden, you get your foot, one foot in the fourth dimension. And you're like, wow, I can see things that I never knew existed. But in our, in our planet, if we had really shifted completely, and I mean every single human being, all of this stuff that is crap <laughs> that we have would, would start to shift very quickly because people would understand oneness. They would understand, you know, as long as we, as long as we continue to have duality and racism and all these things, these are really third dimensional beliefs in the separation of humanity. There's someone that believes I am better than you. You know, I, I deserve more than you. And that people that are experiencing it start to also, you know, maybe they also have some belief in it or whatever. But as long as we still are acting in that way, we're not in oneness at all. It's the moment that we really wake up and, and I realize there's no difference between you and me except our physical covering. And there's, and that, you know, that I create my own reality. I want a beautiful life. I cannot have the most beautiful life that is out there while I'm still actively participating in things that hurt other people. But sometimes you have, you're, you're, you're experiencing them because as a humanity, we're still allowing these things. So the oneness part is when we start to let go of those things, when we start to really take care of each other, because we would always take care of ourselves. We're not going to, you know, actively hurt ourselves. We're not going to actively, you know, do those things consciously like we do them now. But it's a slow shifting of it. So when we really start to move in the fourth and then, you know, when you, the fourth is kind of a staging ground. Because I would say we've got one foot in the fourth. But when we all move into the fourth, it's like we'll get sucked right up into the fifth because we'll move right into the heart. You know. When um, like when, people, <laughs> when people talk about dimensions, um, like you know the um, the effect where we keep changing timelines or timelines, we'll use timelines. When um, people are saying that whenever a situation occurs, it's sort of like a bifurcation or something where all these different timelines go where it could have the situation could have gone this way or that way or this way or that way. And all those, if a person tries to go and move into a different timeline, does that mean that their molecules or their cells or something have to adjust to the vibration in there? Uh, blah, blah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, you, okay. Only because I'm writing a story. Oh, that. okay. Well, when you shift timelines, generally yes. there's no, um, we don't necessarily now consciously shift like we could if we realized, let me, let's explain this. Remember I was saying you, your, um, you create your own reality. Yes. Okay. You right now, I right now, my little beautiful doggy apple right now is on a timeline. Right now, let's say we're on the same one because we're communicating with each other. But in truth, that's not actually even true. Okay. Well, let's just stay there. We're on the same timeline. No brain. Okay. <laughs> okay. We've created this timeline because we are um, we are focused on in this now moment on this. And this is on, what is. On the same frequency. Well, exactly. Same frequency. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. So we're okay. on the same frequency. The moment that we choose to do something else, the moment that I say I'm leaving the room and I make a choice, 
I have shifted to a timeline where I am no longer in the room. But there's a part of me that would have continued to stay here and have a conversation with you. So could that also be likened to um, we have so a we're shifting timelines all the time, uh -huh. all the time. Every time we make sort of a new choice, a new direction. And let me give you a very good example. OK, I feel sorry for schizophrenics. <laughs> well, let me tell you, schizophrenics, it's very interesting. They they have it. no they're they're multidimensionally focused in a singular yes. focused world and they can't when they're in a, where when when the when it shatters for them yeah they can't they're trying to hold focus but they're seeing everything at once it can be very very disconcerting um th i'll give you a good example um this band that um I i'm i'm a in charge of a blues foundation and we sent a band to a competition um to and it, it, the winner of the band gets all kinds of great things they get to be booked on festivals they get a record deal all these kind of things we sent this band to norway well they decided to drive to norway <laughs> which is long it's about a 22 hour drive and they have to go through denmark and then they take a ferry across the water to norway and they left to go and their car broke down when they were in Denmark. And it just didn't look like they were gonna make it. They needed a new car fast, they needed all these things and they were just like, should we even try to go? And they really got to the point where they were like, you know, is it even worth it to go now? It's such a drama to get, get there. And one of the people in the band was like, you know what? We're halfway to Norway, we're halfway to Holland. Let's just go to Norway, you know? Let's do it. And she really got them together and they rallied and they were able to find a car and they were able to get there. And they went and they won. Oh. The Dutch band won. You know, and it took not didn't take them 22 hours to get to Norway. It took them 55. But they got there and won. And that, that decision and that moment changed their life. It absolutely changed their life. Now you can also know that there's a timeline where they didn't go and went back to Holland. Yeah. You know, that's so. kind of like how it works. And you can probably identify in your own life. And I was thinking about this a lot when I was there because I was witnessing this and I, and I was thinking about those moments that you make a decision and it changes the course of your entire life. You know, we're constantly shifting timelines, but we make that's when a timeline I'm very certain is when a new timeline starts. At the decision point. At, at the decision point. And, and sometimes it's little decisions and sometimes it's big decisions. But for them, this was a very major decision. Because yeah. it would either go this way or go that way. You know, there was no, well, well, there was when, no thing, huh? When, when you're thinking of verb, yes? When I'm thinking of what? A verb. A verb. Curve? A verb. Yeah. Yes. Um, same time, uh, you make the the action. That yeah. is uh, a really a decision. Yeah. Not just thinking. Right. You can thinking and you change timelines in uh, your uh, consciousness. Right. Right. But uh, in three D, you will not change it. Right. It's when you take the action. When yes, they yes. decided in that moment they were gonna they were gonna go and then they went. That is the moment. But it was yeah. that decision to act in that it was a decision to act and then acting and following. They could have stayed they could have done one of three things. They could have stayed in Denmark forever and ever and still be there as we speak right now. They could have come home and they could have gone on. And there's, you know, infinite also possibilities but those were the sort of three major ones but they decided to go and then they you know they had this specific outcome they could have never had that outcome had they come home or had they stayed in denmark it boggles my 3d mind to know that there's all these different timelines each of us have and they well, all exist well they Where's do <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you something else. A, a friend of mine had this experience, and um, 
it was so significant that they were there was it, it's happened to two people that i know which is interesting but there was a couple and they were riding motorcycles and they were driving down the road and a truck pulled out in front of them and they knew that they were going to hit the truck there was just no it was not not going to happen it was going to happen they were going to hit the truck there was no way there was nowhere for them to go it was just going to happen and so they both just knew that they were going to die in that moment and there was just nothing that was going to happen or they were going to be in an, in an accident and you know um they all of a sudden were on the other side of the truck and they thought they were dead they were really sure they were dead because they knew they had hit the truck and they looked to see their if where their bodies were you know because they knew that they had to be dead and they weren't so what happened what happened they Angels. shifted timelines oh you know you can say it was a miracle well yes you can say angels lifted them above the truck but their memory is going right into it and then being on the other side of it you know on youtube they have these pictures of these near accidents um that's going if you looked on um i've seen not, those but they show the thing and then oh, the person's on the other side of it and it's yeah, like how did it happen that's a timeline shift wow because wow. there was there was something in the consciousness that decided that they wanted to go on that they that wasn't going to be their end but in in their in there was a part of them that did have that experience but their consciousness moved on to it i had another friend that had the same thing on a motorcycle he was driving he said to me, Karen, if you knew this guy, he's like this big trucker guy, you know, really not thinking about stuff like this at all. And he's like, I know I hit, he had the same. I knew I hit the truck. I knew it. He didn't even, but the thing is his motorcycle didn't even go over. He didn't even, he was just all of a sudden on the other side of the truck. And he was just sitting there going, how did that even happen? How wow. did I actually go through the truck? You know, was it a phantom truck? I don't know. Maybe it wasn't even a real truck. That's a whole. Of, that's a discussion for Ghostbusters. But one of the handlers was talking about uh, was channeling um, Cleopatra mm -hmm. on the Shiny Show, I think. Yeah. And they had asked. Um, they were asking about her death and so on and so forth. But one of the things that I think they said what they had asked her is on another timeline. Yeah. Where, you stay alive or did you succeed and she said yes and it changed all of yeah um, that continent where they are very peaceful everybody is living amongst themselves each other you yeah. know the different tribes and so on and so forth in a peaceful way and women have all these rights they're equal to men and so on and so forth yeah. and they had asked her well don't you wish you were on there or something and she says that's not really open for discussion yeah, you know. because because we have because we have chosen a trajectory that we yeah. want to experience. If you understand, this is this is nice because it kind of dovetails back when we were talking about reality. You know, and I and and Theos has talked about this a lot too, is that you've got creation, which is that single point that had consciousness of itself, and all potential was within that, within that point. But in order to experience it, there had to be some sort of expansion so that it could have the perspective to look at everything. So it's kind of like a story being told. It's like, okay, now we're going to tell the story of this and, and, and we're going to follow it through to its natural ending. And now we're going to tell the same story, but with just a few details changed and let yeah. it follow, it, you know, and that's how it really, really works. My, I'll tell you something that also happened. I've had several timeline jumps of my own. Um, and I'm pretty sure I had one just yesterday. And, and, I, and I'm serious because every time I have one, I hear you've jumped timelines. And I never used to hear that ever, but all of a sudden at one moment I started hearing it the i had a friend um he was part of the monroe institute i don't know if you know what that is that's it was a big thing um in the early 80s but um he was he was working on his kitchen you know he was doing his kitchen cleaning or building something in his kitchen he decided he was hungry 
and he wanted to have a peanut butter sandwich. This is very normal stuff. And he opened the cabinet and he couldn't see the peanut butter. You know, he couldn't see it. And he knew where the peanut butter was. It was always right there in front of him. And normally he would reach up and pull the peanut butter down and make a peanut butter sandwich. Well, he opened the cabinet and he couldn't see the peanut butter. And so he like stuck his hand and he was like looking around and he was like, Huh, where's the peanut butter? So he shut the cabinet. And then he thought, I know we have peanut butter. And he opened up the cabinet, and then right there in front of him was the peanut butter. <laughs> so, you know, what was it? The interesting thing is he shifted. He shifted to a place where there was no peanut butter, and then he shifted to a place where there was peanut butter. Maybe he shifted back to the place. So who knows where he was in the moment? But he said he put his hand through the place where the peanut butter had been. So was the peanut butter shifting realities or was he? It, it, it's hard to know. It's hard to really know. Probably him. You know, wow. I don't know how much peanut butter consciousness there is out there. You know, <laughs> jars of Skippy appearing here and there and everywhere. But <laughs> That's probably why it's called Skippy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but you want to see what I'm saying? So he shifted. He knew the peanut butter was there, but he opened it up. It wasn't there. And then he closed his eyes and he said, I know the peanut butter's there. And then he opened it up again. And there it was. So he shifted. He says he shifted to a timeline where it wasn't and then shifted back. I don't know. Or one or the other has happened, but he definitely shifted, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Don said, ask Max and Jim about the consciousness of peanut butter. Maybe we can get Jim to, count, <laughs> to channel some peanut butter. <laughs> well, while Max is walking down, um, down a, a store, a the store, street. Uh, yeah. You know, he in the be, store. He can be walking down, he can be doing his uh, webinar as he's, you know, he's holding his selfie stick, asking, going down the grocery store aisle, asking about <laughs> <a bunch of> stuff. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Okay, that's good. That next webinar, when I'm back, I'm asking about the consciousness of peanut butter. <laughs> but that's how. But that's the time. That's how timelines work. They, you know, that's a weird one. But I think some of that is just for our own. Uh, it's when timelines bleed sometimes, you know, and, and for whatever reason they do bleed it when, when um, they, there, there becomes a pocket that gets twisted and some, uh, some reality bleeds into another one, then it, then it untwists itself. Theos used to talk about that when I first was asking them where they were and they were saying to me that they weren't really anywhere, but sometimes they were standing on the edge of dimensions. And they even said sometimes dimensions shift themselves and create like a dimension that's temporary, and then they unshift and then they disappear again. And yes, I found like that a, physics like a, is actually true, huh? Yeah, it's like a Moebius strip, you know? Yeah, see, that you have you? those words. I have the, not those words. I don't know. I'm talking, I'm thinking rubber bands like yeah. taffy. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the um, Moebius strip. So, so. It's, it's in physics. And yes, it's like an a infinite sy symbol, you mm -hmm. know? And mm -hmm. after that, it, it's changing. And when it's changing, take uh, other forms, everything is changing. Yeah. Um, it's like a lap. And, uh, a lap you have when you sit down, but when you stand up, it's gone. <laughs> yes. do you, yeah. do you, can, I, can I tell you something? See, Alex has these quantum physics terminology. And because my ability to understand is so childlike, Theos tells me it's like a lap. <laughs> because I can understand that. <laughs> right. But we need to, to make up updates, you know. <laughs> well, I know that I know that they showed me like they were they even said to me it's kind of like you know, you've got two dimensions and they sort of do this, and then all of a sudden there's a new dimension that wasn't there because it twisted. Yeah. Like I can yeah. understand that. They showed me that with like taffy. I don't know, you know. Can, can you universe. can you put that into our third dimensional perspective of not only are we living all our so-called past lives and future lives simultaneously, but we're also creating all these um, 
bifurcation points or uh, timeline points? I mean, where do they all fit? Well, okay. Uh, this is the other no, thing. I, I, the theaters taught me when I was a kid. They showed me like a comic strip, you know, like here you've got, um, wait a minute. <laughs> you don't want to see how I draw on paper. It's really terrible. I doodle. So it's, so let me see if I can draw this. No, I, I can't. I can't. So, so you've got comics. Like everyone knows what a comic is, right? Like right. A, so you've got these little strips like this, you know, in a comic book. Or, or film in, strip. No, or a film strip. But what they showed me is that they show them laid out linear, linearly, linear, linear, linear. Like this. Flat. They show them flat laid out. No, 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 no. Literally. I can't see it right now. They show them flat, laid out, lined up one next to the other. But as far as I could see, infinitely, they said, infinitely. And they said, that's how time is. They said, it's all time at the same time. That's, again, the lap. They give it to me. But I never forgot it. They said, time is like that, all time at the same time. All time is laid out in little pockets or little moments and that you can move from, mo that we move from moment to moment to moment and that we have the ability as people to move from this time to a time way over here, but it's there and it already exists and it's complete potential. You can say, yes, we're ultimately creating stuff, but I will say that we are creating it, but it it's already it's already happened in that now. Our consciousness of us right now hasn't caught up to it yet. Oh, lagging. <laughs> it's lagging. No, it's busy being focused in this now. We have the ability as human beings, we have, you know, you were talking about a schizophrenic, right? Yes, I was just thinking of them. Okay. So you you and you spoke of them. We have most humans that, that are not experiencing schizophrenia have the ability to be singularly focused, which is really, really a gift. Because we see what not being singularly focused does to you in a world that demands your attention and doesn't understand that you're also in parallel worlds at the same time. And it can be very disconcerting for the person who's in a physical body experiencing stuff that they can't see or touch, but knowing that it's there, you know. So we have this ability of singular focus. And so the reason that we're not experiencing this timeline way over here in our conscious state is because we're choosing to come into this world to have this experience right now. And it's really not so important what happened, you know, what happened in the timeline of that planet or this dimension or that time, you know, that this year, we're really only going to stay here because it gives us a, a, another way to just savor it even more, to experience it even that much more deeply, you know, where we don't have to multitask our, our incarnation. We can just focus on this one and really, really try to do it well. We so, wanted that. Uh, we wanted that. Did, did you know, let me just say this. We want that because when we are multi-focused, we are God, we're really in the God part of ourselves that, that is already has this experience. And the whole reason that this one little point decided to project itself out in all these different storylines or incarnations is so they could have a singular experience, infinite ones. And, and as the whole creator, it's able to focus on all of that. But us as individuals, you know, we've chosen to, to focus. That is why we have ego. <laughs> for yeah, that purpose. exactly. <laughs> that is exactly right. That is the purpose of the ego, to keep yeah. us here. Remember when we was talking mm -hmm. about there's two things. There's the things that, you know, keep us knowing who we are and there's and keep us forgetting. The ego yeah. is the ego's job is to say, you are this, you are that. Don't try to think about other stuff because you came to this world to experience this. And who do you think you are thinking you can, you know, I mean, that's the ego. The ego is, is designed for that, really. So the people who come into this world as schizophrenics, do they come in knowingly? 
that they're going to have all these um, realities. Yeah. Remember the when you're talking? There's always several things at play. Uh huh. There's they're they they're, they're coming because they're coming in to have the experience of having a uh, a, a challenge a challenge uh -huh. in this life. It doesn't mean that the challenge is nice. It doesn't mean that they don't want to overcome it or that they shouldn't overcome it or they shouldn't get control of it. But there is some, there is that aspect that yes, does say, okay, yeah, I'll have that experience. Why not? The, no. the thing is, is when we want to know our past lives, um, aren't we asking then for um, to be in control of the schizophrenic feeling you know because when you hear about some people who were going to their past lives and they were queens or they were this or they, they were idols in another country or gods in this or gods in that i mean to me that's asking for a schizophrenic type of uh life where they're trying to think that they can manipulate or they can be in control Whereas the well, there's there's you know, there's a part of people there's several things there, and I don't know that it's schizophrenic, but I'll just I don't think it's schizophrenic. It might feel like a little bit, but there's a, there's people that need validation in this right. life or other lives where they they need to feel special. They want to feel special, so it's great for them to hear they were the queen of this, the king of that, the you know. Virgin Mary, Jesus. I mean, how many people have you met that are Jesus or Virgin Mary or with Jesus on the cross? Uh -huh. You know, you can say there's a very limited number of souls and maybe they were all there or maybe they weren't. But there's a part of people that really want to feel that validation. There's the other thing of we are all connected to everything. So there is some part of your aspect that could connect into that energy that is the king. I don't hear many people wanting to be, you know, the toilet clean cleaner from, you know, the year, you know, 1900, but somebody had to be that, you know. I've cleaned a lot of those. Well, the thing is too, that we were, we, we are all, all of it. We are all, um, you know, I, I think that you, you, the thing is you shouldn't really make your identity on what you were as something in a past life. Right. It doesn't matter if you are the king of England. You're, you're, you know, you're a, you know, you're a McDonald's guy now. So that's not to say that a McDonald's guy and the king of England aren't, you know, pretty awesome. Each one of them. But no, it's it's the king of England in other timeline who is undercover, Karen. You don't it's what? It. It's the king of England. Yeah. In another timeline. Undercover. 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 That's right. Undercover as a McDonald's guy. So, yeah, if, if let that. Let me share something. I don't have a problem with these people. Some, some, let's say, are very shy, you know. And, yeah, exactly. It, and, because we're all, all of it. So, yes. some people need the validation. They need to know that there's more to them than what the, the, this is. At the same time, the big goal should be to kind of help them get okay with who they are now because it doesn't matter if you were the king of england before you're this person now and the only person that you really have any control over is this person right now that you're in consciousness of yes so yes i can say all of us were probably jesus all of us were kings and queens and aliens and all this stuff but the person that we are here in this moment right now is who we are so the person we need to make peace with the person that we need to you know, be invested in, be focused on is us. You know, it's it's some for some people it's a deferment. For some people, it becomes a big distraction. I was this in another life, okay, but you're this in this life. Yeah, to me that, for me personally, it would be a distraction. Well, it's, it's only a distraction if you're really judging it. it. It it's a distraction if that becomes your identity, and you're you uh, know. Like what Alex was saying earlier, you have to be grounded in this reality. You have to be grounded in this life or else you're never going to do anything but sit around and think about what could have been, would have been, should have been, and isn't for you right now. Yes. Right? 
So your moment, your power is in this now moment. The only thing you can control is yourself in this moment, what you choose to focus on. If you're choosing to focus on something that isn't serving you, then it's then then that's okay, your choice to do that. But it's not the empowerment to be the best person you can be in this now moment. Who cares, you know, if you were Queen of England or you know, the celestial princess of the Oompapa civilization. <laughs> I just made that out. There's got to be an Oompapa civilization. <laughs> May I make a comment about past lives? Sure. Yeah. So like I, for me, I think it's relevant. And it, as long as it doesn't bring you to a place of entitlement, like because I was a rock star, for example, in a last life, I don't think I'm entitled for that. I just see, I just see it as an energy I can draw from. Of course, of course, yeah. of course. Well, I didn't get to that yeah. point because I was talking about it as being a trap. But of course, yeah, if it in, if it if it empowers you, but it doesn't become your identity, or put, it, it can be integrated into your identity. But the thing is, is everyone is so focused on what they were, and they're not really so much focused on who they are, and who you are is no different than who you were before. You're still the soul having the experience of that life. So you had an experience of a life, but I can definitely probably tap into your life and also have that experience. So we are all one. So there's not any one of us that is any more this or that than the other one in, in, in the larger reality of it, you know? And that's what we have to remember. We are only that being that is divine. All of us, every single one of us. There's no lesser or greater in anything or anyone. So if it gives you an identity that helps you grow, perfect. But ultimately, it still needs to bring you back to yourself. And you need to stand in yourself. You need to be your best self. And that is you now in this moment with this life experience, sharing what you know with people or with other, you know, with, with your family or whomever, but being your best person has nothing to do with who you were in a past life, has nothing to do with it. It has nothing even to do with who you were yesterday. It's who you choose to be now and in this moment because every day is new. Every moment is new. You could have been a jerk three minutes ago and you're a great guy now and you know that's the, the you that I get to experience. You know? No, truly, truly we are in every moment, you know, those decision moments, we get to choose who we are. Always. Right. I, I just see the music as, as a means to share our truth with, with the world and not so much. Sure, but that's a vehicle. That's a, yeah. that's a strategy. That's right. not who you are. Okay. It's a strategy of implementation, but has nothing to do with who you are. Excuse me. Um, it's hmm. not that true. It's just, um, let's say, a point of view yeah it's your point of true of you basically the true it's a, a philosophical concept like uh, let's say a group of people decide what is true for everybody yeah but um, that part of the world and what is everybody maybe don't feel like it and uh, I think we live in that right now. <laughs> when I was, I was going to say, when I was um, in the psychology field, one of my greatest challenges was working with um, a schizophrenic. And um, it was trying to explain to her spouse what it was like to hear, what was like to hear voices because the other person was, um, because the spouse couldn't relate to the voices. Um, I had to say, well, if you think about being in a barista and everybody shouting at you with orders, you know, that's how real it is for your spouse to um, be hearing these voices. And your voice is just one of many. But I got out of the field because um, I was tending more and more to see it in the spiritual sense. And uh, at that time, they didn't have, uh, that was voodoo or that was not something that was discussed and you were uh, kicked out of 
Yeah, and it's a challenge. It's a big challenge. It's a challenge for people to relate to that, to, to help them. To it's also a challenge for the person themselves. It's a big. It's a big job. My, my very good friend Crystal yeah. is a, a is is a channel as well, and she's gone into mental illness just specifically because she understands it. She overcame it as well but she's also oh, wow. understands it from the spiritual perspective. So she's offering that to people and she's really making a difference. That's a big, that's a big job. It's a big calling. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to do it today. That's why I'm working with animals. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. So listen, we've gone a little bit over time, but I, I just want to conclude this. It's been a very interesting conversation. I think everybody for their contribution and, um, I'll be in India going, uh, I leave on Friday and I'll be gone for five weeks. I, oh. I'll be back on the week of the 5th, I think, whatever that weekend is. And Jim will be channeling. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. And I wish you a wonderful time. And yeah, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to have uh, Even Teller and Jonathan C. Martin, of course, Jim. So see you guys later. And uh, what did you do on your trip? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. Oh, Diana, you didn't talk at all today. She came in late. Are you there? Can you talk or no? True. Oh, she didn't get you a chance. Anyway, anyway, much love to everyone, and we will see you next time. Bye.